first on the agenda is uh, approval of the agenda. So do we need to add a between six and seven reviewing historic resources and then economic development? What's our, what's our plan there? Yeah, we do either seven one. Just adds. Yeah, I think we should probably let's. Um, I think that makes sense. So. Just add it to seven. Historic resources implementation and economic development. Sure, we'll do the historic resources first, I guess, because we we already have it at our disposal. Uh. Any objections to the modification? No. Approved by unanimous consent. Uh, next is comments from the chair. I don't really have much other than to say uh, I feel like we're getting into the meat of reviewing these chapters for the town plan. Um, just wanted to say thanks to Mike and Meredith. Um, it's becoming more and more apparent to me each of these meetings that you're just juggling a ton of balls <laughs> to be able to do this. So thanks again. Um, appreciate all the work that you do to get us these drafts in the form that they're in. Um, general business, comments from the public, nobody is here. Uh, next is to review and approve the minutes from February 10th. Has so everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? I have a question. The, on the top of the back, Aaron made a motion to remove the remainder of Franklin Square condos. Didn't we add the remainder of Franklin Square, Square condos? Not remove them? Yes. We did add them. So I made the motion to remove them. That motion failed. Right. So there was, was a first. motion. So there was another motion. There was another motion to. That was a good question. What was the. Aaron made a motion to remove it. There was a different motion before that. Yeah. Oh, Ariane made a motion to remove Frank Franklin Street Southwest. And that one um, failed. And that, that one failed. failed. The one you seconded, Aaron, failed. And then you made a motion to add it, which is to add the rest of the parcel. That was my, my understanding. Vote. Right. Yes. Yeah, three three right. with no extensions. Right. So that was to add it. So what's the change to the... So change remove to add. Top of the second On the top page. of the back page. And it's the remainder of the Squ Franklin Square condos parcel. Parcel, yeah. Just to clarify. Move approval of the minutes with those changes. Second. All those in favor? Okay. And opposed? Perfect. Good. Minutes are approved. Uh, next item is review of additional staff recommendations on the design review regulations. <clears throat> All right. So I put together the, the matrix, most of which you don't have to worry about the ones that are already colored. Those are the ones that we've already made decisions on. But what Meredith and I did after the last meeting was to kind of go through and we're making those changes into a strikeout copy. We have a couple of minor changes that when we did our final proofread, we found their rules, for example, that talk about, and this goes a little bit to some of the orange places, that talks about replacing something but earlier it's exempt so it's like well we, we you should make sure when you're replacing windows that they're re in kind but then up front there's some rules that say if you're replacing kind you don't need a permit so we're kind of like well we've got a we got an inconsistency that we need to clean up so there are going to be a couple of minor points along that it won't change the fundamentals of what was decided but it may change just a little bit of how some some internal working so We've got a strikeout copy on that. And then if we make changes that are down here below from 13 to 20, then we'll add those to the decision. And most of, or everything that's down here talks a little bit about the 
map changes to the district. So, for example, probably the easiest one to go through is, is we had wanted to match our design review to neighborhood boundaries. So one place, for example, was, you know, we've got the area up here on Main Street, um, which is split in half. Half of it's part of this neighborhood and half of it's part of that neighborhood. What we can do is just to make that its own neighborhood. I mean, we already have 50 neighborhoods to add one more neighborhood. No, no more. Would just go and, you know, there'd be a couple of neighborhoods we'd add and a couple of neighborhoods that we would just adjust the boundaries to. So the idea being that this is, the, the area, the properties on Main Street are slightly different than those that may be on Franklin and Cross Streets or Loomis and Liberty Streets because of their proximity to the school and their location on Main Street. So Main Street would, it wouldn't change the zoning designation at all. It would just go and create another neighborhood within that zoning district. So it would still match the zoning it was still okay. the zoning. The zoning wouldn't change. We yeah. would just create another neighborhood with another neighborhood description that would. So it's still residential 1500. Still residential mm -hmm. 1500. Yes. Why are we? So that's the 82 and 83 this year. And so the line doesn't will match the neighborhood boundary as it does elsewhere. Is Main Street the line between 83 and 82 right now? Yeah. So right now the neighborhoods are one and two. We would just have. One, two, three. In the end. And there are just a couple of these types of, of changes that we can talk about. Those are kind of some of the little changes. And as I said, it's mostly because we were we had been looking at trying to having something rational that we can tie and have something defensible. And so if this is where we want the design review line, then we can simply adjust our discussion of it in the zoning by adding another neighborhood, and that cleans that one up. And if people aren't interested in doing that, that... Maybe we could call it something other than the Main Street Middle School. Just because the school itself is a city, so it's not actually part of that zoning, right? No, it is part it's part of the zoning. It's right there. Well, it's okay. It's, it's in there. I mean, we can yeah, pick when, whatever name we want. When we I did would just the maps before that people wanted to see the municipal uh, sites identified, but that's fine. I don't know. I don't. If I'm understanding you correctly, it's creating a neighborhood so that our design review makes sense, which. <laughs> It doesn't, it's, uh, it's, doesn't matching, like, it's going a little bit backwards at it. Yeah, understandably. If, it's, if it's not a true neighborhood, I don't, um, I don't know if that would be convincing to people anyway. But so well, it doesn't, it doesn't really move me to. Okay, so <laughs> if that do, one, if that's, if that doesn't end up going, then we'll just, we could just go through these and see if any of them make sense for what people <laughs> might want to go through, and you can give a quick up or down. Um, does it, really, does, it, does it really do anything to be a neighborhood? Uh, it just, it would be, it would have a slightly different written description of what defines that neighborhood. It's not going to make a lot of difference other than to kind of meet our objective of having design review districts follow neighborhood boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the exceptions is these properties here don't match the neighborhoods. so. We could catch catch it under gateways, though. We could say we, we chose that chunk of those two neighborhoods because they're a gateway, and we only chose the properties that are facing Main Street. OK. As I said, didn't we, a, lot, a number of these were just, yeah, they were, were these were some suggestions. And like I said, I've got about seven, seven of these very small, some of them small, some of them bigger ones. That would be one. So if that's, that's a no, that's fine. The second one was. Did we want to add this section in? Oh, oh no. This is, uh, this is a very challenging. Yes. It's a, it's He's kind of taped taken. together. No. Um, this section here, which we didn't end up putting in before, mm -hmm. one reason to put them in is the, the growth center actually comes 
all the way out here mm -hmm. to that part of the growth center. They are also in the mixed use district. So we didn't include this property out to State Street. It was just, as we were reviewing things, we could put that in. I could send out notices to them when we do the next hearing. Um, we wanted to add these guys into design review as well. So these are all in right now? With our these guys are all in out to this black line. I'm not sure it makes sense to add those. Those are like houses. What or those homes are. And like Some of them are businesses too. <coughs> Doctors' <coughs> offices and things like that. Out that far? Uh, yeah, and I, don't, I think those are just a couple of homes out that way. And there's a cluster of about, I don't know, six it's houses. A couple of apartment buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Like six, seven, eight houses maybe. And then the end of that is the cemetery? What is uh, the end of that is the cemetery, yes. So as I said, they, the, these areas are in the growth center, so that was one reason I thought. Um, and again, if there's no appetite for doing that, then. So what, this is where the line was? It's still the black in, line is where the line was? Yes. This is what we added? Yeah. Well, it's certainly considered a gateway into the city. Do you know what's on this big parcel? These two pieces here are part of the Goldman parcel. Oh. So they're both frontage, they're vacant. I think it's kind of like a They're pretty steep, steep there. Yeah. 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 So there's like a clear break. Mm -hmm. yeah. Between from the here. development. That, okay. that like hillside yeah. kind of creates this break from where you feel like downtown starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if there's not much on that one. Um, so another one which probably goes along with the other one, which you probably won't look at. Uh, Toy Town is the little village that's on the other side of the highway underpass on Route 2. There's a creamy stand and a couple of houses. Uh, it's called Toy Town? That's okay. <laughs> there's smaller, so smaller houses on smaller lots. So that's the only thing reason I can figure that. I have no that. idea. It was, that was what it was when I got here. It's a cap for the capillary districts. That's what they were called. And yeah. So it kind of stuck, and I have no idea if people out there even refer to it that way. But um, so that is actually part of the same neighborhood and district as these guys, the high school Green Mountain Drive. And so, if we were going to try to follow neighborhood lines, Toy Town could be its own neighborhood in there, and then that would clean that line up. Would that be a benefit to them? It's mostly the, the only difference is adding these things in to try to be consistent. And if there's not a big yank to try to be following neighborhood lines. On this side of the river or on the other side? It's on the, the other, other side, side of the river. It's okay. on Route 2. OK, yeah. Do you want to I know where we're talking. For a second, I thought we were talking about this. I didn't. This one goes all the way out? Yeah, the yeah. neighborhood. Runs as, uh, runs all the way out. Okay. Um, and not necessarily the Toy Town Blue Park, but the pink, the the creamy stands, and a couple of the other ones on that side. So if we cut it off there, they would be separate. Um, so that would be another one. Uh, another one that is Stonecutter's Way. Again, for the neighborhood sense, Stonecutter's Way is actually part of the same neighborhood that goes all the way out to the roundabout. So we could have made stone cutters way. Um, the next one that actually has some change, which would be interesting, right here on Hubbard Street are two parcels that are in the designated downtown and in the design review district on Hubbard Street. And so we've made one change already the zoning designation. This one would just go and say if we should move three three Hubbard and seven Hubbard to the UC two zoning district. So that would actually change their zoning district. In the Wait, where are they now, Mike? They are currently in residential fifteen hundred. So that was just to kind of clean these two up. That you see that are sitting right in here. They're a different color. They're already in the designated downtown. Don't lie. But they're they're behind Bohemian Bakery basically. So 
So and it's just two parcels. They're just two parcels that ended up in like mixed like use. Mixed. They they ended up in residential fifteen hundred instead of the. It's on the eastern side of Harvard. Yes. Like toward the east state. Yeah. If you get past Bohemian Bakery, there's like two. Might even be a third house there, but the third house is not in the designated downtown. And I'm not really sure why. Oh. oh so there's, there's two one. parcels that are in, and then one here that's out, right? Yeah. Now. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, can you point those out again, Mike? They're right in here. So oh, you've got at the end of Hubbard Street. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hubbard Street, you got the bakery, and then yeah. right behind the bakery are yeah. three small houses. Mm hmm two of which are in the designated downtown. Guys, so it's just, an, yeah. it's just cleaning up where we've got a bunch of things that all seem to be pointing in the same direction. We could shift them to the UC2 district and eliminate an, another small inconsistency between all of our districts. Do you think there's going to be a reaction from the owners? I would have to send them a notice. I mean, it's yeah. not going to, it's it's going to expand. It's basically an upzoning for them. To which direction would we take? Three? They're already, so they're already in the designated downtown. They're already in design review. Yeah. They just happen to be in residential 1500. So they would just get shifted to be residential. Considering they're in all the rest of the related pieces. Yeah. That we would just put them in with UC2, which is the same neighborhood. Yeah. As the bakery and other pieces. Yeah, okay. But that's less oh. restrictive, sort of generally, than what they're in right now. You're yeah, saying. it'd yeah. be an up zone, okay. So maybe to that one. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the other ones, as I said, I was just, as I was getting these ready to go for. Um, Ashley to do the final things on the map was when I was kind of taking a look. Another one we've got that's kind of part of a neighborhood is up here um, on School Street. What's everything out to Cedar Street is there except that the neighborhood goes out to the school. So if we wanted to capture the last three buildings, we could get <coughs> in the rest of that neighborhood. Into which? It would just get shifted into 7 6, which is <coughs> the neighborhood that's. To School Street mixed use neighborhood. Mm, okay. Again, if there's less of a appetite for cleaning up the edges, then that one might go along with the same as some of these other ones. Where wouldn't there still be properties on the south side of the State, East State? East State's a separate neighborhood, and that's on the next page. But it's the same color. Yes, they're both the same zoning district, but different neighborhoods. School Street is a different neighborhood than East State. Right. So this would have... This will just fix the School Street out. intersection. There's the School Street neighborhood. So just the idea of 13 through 18, and then we'll get to the to the last one on 20, because 19 is really a summary. So if the if the only one that we'll make changes to our 17, had we had we done 13 through 18, then everything would follow neighborhood boundaries, with the exception of Cliff Street, because of those three parcels that are in the designated downtown, and the big gateway here on Meadow, up to the Meadow, which is a mixed-use district which is the same neighborhood as Kirby's house. But I wasn't going to propose to make that change. That can wait till the Historic Preservation Group continues their work on, on um, a National Register designation out here in that one. But we'll still have a couple, and that's not a big deal. The last one, which is number 20, just goes through and says, how would we try to solve there's a lot of jumbling on East State and a lot of lines that would have to be pushed for East State because officially the this piece here, um, which is the old VCFA land that's been sold, 
is still part of VCFA. And then the college neighborhood actually doesn't stop at the college. It actually goes down the hill to here. So you end up with how do we, you know, there are just a number of, of and then 7 3 kind of goes in and out down here. So there's, there would take a lot more line moving to make that get cleaned up. But considering the other ones aren't going to get changed, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to mess around with that. We'll just leave those slightly jumbled, knowing that we will clean them up at some other point, maybe when we're working on some, maybe we'll make some recommendations when we do the land use plan about making a long-term recommendation of what our thoughts are. Like, all mixed-use districts should be in design review, in which case then we've got a plan that sets out over the next eight years to look at adding those in. And then we can ask the question of whether this stretch out here that's in mixed use, you know, if these are mostly residential, maybe they should be converted to a residential 6,000 neighborhood or something like that. Maybe it makes more sense that that be zoned residential through here rather than zoned mixed use for commercial. Yeah. But we can talk about in the land use chapter how to clean up this. Whatever inconsistencies are left, we can go back through these six or eight inconsistencies and say we'll fix them later on when we've had a chance to kind of turn things over and do a little bit of planning on the other end. So it makes the most sense right now. Do you want like up or down votes on these things uh, individually, if, or what do you, what do you think? People feel there's some. I mean, it seems like only 17 had any amount of support. If there are others that people think <coughs> have some merit to make those changes now, we can have a vote to. Change. <clears throat> Maybe the simplest way to do this is is there an appetite amongst the group right now? I'll just focus on 13 through 18. 13 through 18, are there any that this group wants to take up to sort of approve? From like, and if so, what are those? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would move. Number 17, uh, add three Hubbard and seven, seven Hubbard to the UC2 district. Yeah. Was that a motion? Yes, that was, a, that was my accept. I, I tried to move it. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll second. Okay. On, uh, any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Approved. Any other ones? All right, so we can take those up. <clears throat> I'll make that as another one of the changes. And like I said, we could take up these other, in, any of these other ones, inconsistencies as we do the plan. And um, so just so I know a little bit more about neighborhoods, where do we talk about our neighborhoods and when are they? Or is it in the city plan? It's, it, well, it, the, they'll be in the city plan. They're also talked about in the zoning. So within the zoning, we had zoning districts, and every zoning district is broken into neighborhoods. Oh, okay. So that way, there might be a description of a neighborhood that's, although the same zoning district, like, um, I believe this is the Crossroads neighborhood. We usually call it Gas Station Alley. Um, on Berlin Street, you know, the Dunkin' Donuts and Cumberland Farms. That's actually the same zoning district as Berry Street, but it's clearly a different neighborhood and has different character. So the neighborhood description is different, but the same uses and the same setbacks and the same building massing, massing is, uh, is the same between those districts. So they're in the same district, but different neighborhoods. Um, 
drove me yeah, crazy in the, when we did the zoning. You just had like a lot of attorneys arguing about the description of a neighborhood that was completely like meaningless in terms of what it, <laughs> the <laughs> implication of it was. Yeah, but mostly the, where, no, where it would come, well, come to guess, play is, is in a conditional use hearing or in other places in the zoning, there, there are times they'll go and say something, um, this change should be, um, should not undo, unduly impact the character of the neighborhood. And when that comes up, that's when that written description of the character of the neighborhood would come up because something may be allowed in the right. crossroads neighborhood that may not be allowed in in Berry Street simply because it doesn't match the character of the neighborhood. Like a Dunkin' right. Donuts. So it like does, a yeah, Dunkin' Donuts. Exactly. So it becomes a pretty important <laughs> aspect of each one of the zoning districts yeah. to have that description. But it only comes into play in very narrow cases um, and some kind and sometimes it reaches a point where a neighborhood is just reaches a point where it's so different that it really needs to be in its own zoning district and that area crossroads wasn't that far away from reaching that it really is kind of a unique area that could have been its own zoning district but but we had enough we had enough zoning districts we had right? enough zoning districts actually we don't we do, we're okay with the zoning district it's, well, it's the neighborhoods um, we have a lot of unique areas, so it makes it difficult to summarize everything into a smaller number. Um, so anyways, that's that's really where the neighborhoods come in. Um, and we did end up, because, because we have so many zoning districts, once you start breaking those zoning districts into pieces, um, and some of them are broken by geographic areas too so it ended up with like 50 neighborhoods so um, thank you yeah and it was a long process for how we got there too because in some cases we tried to keep the zoning districts like the area around the meadow this was all in the first iteration one zoning district and then they tried to write rules that would say, well, if you're on this part of Elm Street, then you can have a commercial use. And if you're not, then, mm -hmm. and eventually we were like, especially when it went to the public in the public um, comment, there was a lot of concern that people were gonna put commercial uses in the meadow until we finally said, no, let's just make a new zoning district yeah. that is in this area. Um, so a number of these places kind of got split, that's how that got split, that's how East State kind of got split off. So. so as I said, we will, um, with that, we will go through and finish up what we were doing on the strikeout copy. Um, so we've got that ready to go. And so we won't have the hearing on the 9th. March 9th, we were going to have the hearing. It'll probably be March 23rd, just as a final kind of, because we have to warn one more hearing, that's when we'll warn it. With any changes that we've made. Yeah, and we'll have, well, we'll have this, yeah, we'll have the strikeout changes, and we'll have the new map, so if anyone wants to, anyone in the public or anybody wants to provide comments on the revised version, but most of it should follow what they've already seen. Okay, next on the agenda. Uh, review of changes to the historic resources implementation strategy. <clears throat> um, so initially, what we had looked at the historic resources before and provided some comments and we sent it back to um, the Historic Preservation Commission to take a look at. And one of the things that we wanted to add in was um, to make sure that they addressed what were their priorities. There was a lot of list of things that they wanted to do, but what were their priorities, what was the cost, and who's gonna do it? So I went through and added in some recommendations and they kind of went back in and started to do a lot more restructuring. So I've kind of left it with as they did it. I don't know if we necessarily need to, as I said, like they numbered their strategies. That's, I wasn't gonna worry about taking that out. It's not consistent with how the other ones did it, but we can leave it there. 
But what they tried to be able to do is to, to go in and do a couple of things. One was to check that priority cost and who was going to do it. Um, also was to try to go through and um, I think John had thought about it and a couple of people had suggested not just like the first one there, strategy number one on the first page, conduct surveys of historic sites, structures, and districts, including at a minimum two of the new activities listed below. So they wanted to go through and, and add a number. How many of these are we gonna are we gonna do? Um, so they added in some of those. Does it make sense to organize them so that they're priority high to low? Right now it seems like I think we'll go through when sprinkled. we get them I think when we get them done, we will go through and um, because we were going to reorganize anyways, we wanted to leave it in this format while people work at it. So we've got a logic between what's the goal and what are the strategies. Um, in the end, what we're probably going to have is the aspirations, a list of the three goals, and then all of the strategies probably in with some kind of table so we can kind of... Oh. Do it in a different organization, uh -huh. but it becomes difficult to, to think through. Do we have strategies that achieve our goal? If you don't have it, the goals and strategies listed underneath. Because in a number of places, you'll see continue to participate in CLG in the first one, and continue to participate in CLG in the second one, and in the third one. Well, it doesn't make sense to say it three times. We no. can just say it once with a notation that says this goal implement or this strategy implements all three goals. Um, so there are measurable outcomes from these strategies, generally? Depending on what you mean by measurable. Well, something is produced. Um, yes. If, the, if you're talking about something is produced, then we're trying to look at having something that, um, whether it's participate in CLG, create an archaeologically sensitive. Where is participate in CLG? Uh, the second page, strategy two. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I mean, that's an example of one where uh, nothing's produced, but it is a continuation. Yeah, and this continuation of partic participating in that program. I think we also talked about distinguishing things that are continuations versus new projects. Yes, so continuations don't have priorities to them because they're just things that we are doing, but really the priorities are about what are the new things that we want to be doing. Why and eventually, some of the continuation things, we, as you said, we may categorize them differently when we flip them to a table because what most people want to see is what are the new things that you're going to be doing. Um, but we don't want to lose sight of those basic programs that we are already doing. Um, is there anything we're going to stop doing? Uh, there could be, if somebody's got a suggestion that goes through. Um, somebody recognizes something that's either in the zoning or in a regulation. I think we had before, uh, an example of that was there was a recommendation that within the sprinkler code that we should exempt certain structures and uses, and that actually ended up passing, so we took it out of the housing plan, but there was a housing plan that said... You know, oh, that was in the housing plan originally? Yeah, I think it was in the housing implementation strategy mm -hmm. that talked about removing that, because it was part of increasing housing units, yeah. and it was felt that the, the requirement for sprinklers in single-family homes was a barrier to construction of single-family homes. Um, so strategy two, the one about CLG, um, why does that not appear in Goal C with the other uh, policies? I mean, it's, it is a policy, right? Uh, it is. It's strategy 11 on page 5. Continue to participate, participate in CLG. Oh, to oh this is what you mean about it. Appears yeah, multiple it appears times. multiple times. Okay. And so, um, and it was just meant for the committee's working on it to go through and say, what are we doing to improve upon the city's protection of historic resources? You know, all right, what are all the things that we do to protect those? Um, we continue to enforce the unified development regulations, the zoning, so we've got regulations that protect it. 
Um, uh, and then there are a couple of ones that would require something new, and the question is, you know, how, how critical is that? They want to establish a program to identify endangered historic buildings and provide technical support. They've, de they've identified that as a low priority with a high cost, so that's going to be one that, you know, will that be something that we actually continue to keep? I and mean, it's in, it'll be up to you guys to kind of go through and f filter some of these and decide, you know, you guys are looking to take a little bit more on a little bit more than you guys can accomplish in five years but they're trying to they were trying to think about all the things that they would do to you know to to help them and i'm not sure there's much we could do f with number three to be honest with you i don't think there's the staff capacity or the financial capacity for us to identify endangered and i mean basically it comes down to like the jacob davis house over on one home farm way or five home farm way over next to the Agway. You know, there, there's a derelict oh, that building, yeah. historic building. The city is, you know, they, they kind of was like, well, we, we should provide technical support to these owners. And it's kind of like, you know, is that is that something staff should be doing or is it really, you know, that's, you know, it's too bad. But I don't know if that's necessarily a city job duty to try to go and, you know, take these historic structures and figure out how to maintain them when there's nobody there to maintain them. It really is a private sector. But they put some of these in here. Um, so they're not necessarily saying that they're going to get these done in the time of the plan. Not necessarily. I mean, and, and that's a... a pushback or a question I had for them was, you know, and a little bit of my comment was there's an awful lot of these that are high priorities in each of these. I kind mm -hmm. of would prefer to see something that is, you know, these are the things we're definitely going to work on. And they're going to be my high priorities. You know, we're, we really want to do these three things in the next eight years, and those are going to be our high priorities. And, you know, maybe some of these get chunked out, like identifying endangered historic buildings just gets dropped because it's not likely to be on that eight-year list when you're also looking at doing um, historic district nomination for the meadow. And I would see that as a priority, I mean, from my position. I would think that should be something the Historic Preservation Commission could work on as well as the, the college itself is not a historic district either. Neither one of those areas are in a, in a historic district. So those would be priorities. That could take as much as two years to get through that and another year to get through that. I mean, those, those can take two or three years just to get through that process. And then a number of policies and some other things, they can do relatively quickly. Some of the policy ones I, I don't think are bad ideas. Um, you know, adopting a policy to require the maintenance of historic of the city owned historic buildings consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards. That's not something that takes a lot of time to do. It's something we generally do anyways, but yeah. that's <clears throat> so it's gonna be interesting to see how you put this in the table. Because each one of these has quite a bit of descriptive to it. Are you yeah, we had using some shorthand or something? Yeah well well we'll yeah, we'll have to come up with. My goal at this point is to kind of come up with what are the, what are the things that the strategies are. You know, we'll get that, and then we'll figure out how to best tell that story or to explain that to people. Um, I'm just trying a little bit not to mix those two to get into. You know, trying to trying to do two things at the same time. If we know there's a policy we want to remove, or uh, or a strategy we don't want to remove, I think the the aspiration they have is good. I think the goals they have are good. I think their strategies are probably a little bit on the over ambitious side, but. I don't know how much we would like to go through and. So they end up with just one aspiration. It's just one aspiration, yeah. That kind of covers all three goals. It's really helpful for us to know, from your perspective, what isn't feasible. 
because that's the stuff that to me that's what easily falls out if it's not something that's ever going to happen staff's not going to have capacity for it um, and they can't do it on their own it's helpful for me to know what, what those things are and that's that's to me the easiest layer of how we cut this down that's the first layer of yeah cut. so i would say um so improving the understanding where are you on the first page so <clears throat> the first goal is just to improve knowing things you know learning what we can about our historic resources so conducting the surveys of historic structures would be a priority i think that one stays they want to do at least two of these and they have a list of them i'm fine with that um with the list because it's really just a bunch of ideas and you sometimes don't know what's going to jump out at you what opportunities present themselves what things so I, i'm okay with that um, continue CLG is good. Um, I would see this number three was one that I think we had questions with before when it came up and they keep trying to work it back in is to identify and incorporate archaeological and historically significant areas and contexts into the listings. I'm still not sure that's really a strategy. What? It seems like it's part of something else. Um, so, granite industry, tenement, housing clusters, Civil War hospital, capital complex. So, the entire capital complex is in our National Register District. We already have a National Register District. The capital complex is already in it. They want to make sure that that description within basically what was happening in the first strategy, that it reflects these ideas. I don't know if that needs to be a strategy as, as a standalone strategy. I think it's just part of when you're doing these national registers and these state registers that you're going to reflect these mm -hmm. contexts. Mm -hmm. And so three was one that I, I still struggled to get out of them. It's like, it's not really a separate strategy it's just like a, maybe a level of detail for this that we're going in too far here yeah mm -hmm. yeah it might be an action step on how you would implement a strategy and something that might fit on their work plan of how they're doing this but not yeah so that would be one um i would i would probably flag if i were flagging that one uh a survey of the key scenic resources and conductive use shed analysis that one actually i think we discussed briefly i think that actually is a high priority i would actually keep that one in because we've talked about if we want to protect the state house dome or if we want to have us protect it in our regulations we we need to have a study that goes through and says these are the scenic resources and this, these are the or, and or these are the view sheds that we want to protect um otherwise it's just what they're trying to do in the design review is not going to work and the word consultant, whatever that pops. So I appreciate that they're saying their commission and planning department staff, so they know, okay, this isn't something we can do on our own. This one also says, and a consultant, which to me flags a, they're going to need money to do this. So it's yeah, and the cost to, is, yeah, and cost is, yeah, cost is medium, which is yeah. why they'd have to hire a consultant. It's not something we're doing, but it is something we'd have to administer, you know, planning so commission other, staff <laughs> has to work on a consultant. Sorry to interrupt the nope. process that I've set us on, but... So the other piece of that to me is if we know approximately how much money each of these things are going to cost, is there a specific budget that's devoted to these things so we can decide what fits within that? We haven't. And I think just some of it would be, in some cases, they can be looking for grants. So some of it might right. say it's a medium cost, but hey, we're going to look for grants. And right. um, if we get the grant, then we can do it. If we don't get the grant probably won't be able to do it mm -hmm. um, and some of that again comes back to what staff time we have um, so I would I would probably keep that one um, a survey of archaeologically sensitive yeah. areas it's a low priority but it would still involve staff if it ever actually happened right everything there's very very little as many as much as people go and say in here oh HPC will do this it, it's almost 99% of the time comes back to staff doing it. You know, HPC may be guiding it and making some decisions, but at the end of the day, there's got to be a staff person who 
writes a grant or administers a grant or um, you know, when, when it's doing national register districts, it's kind of like who HPC? No, HPC is probably not doing a national register district. It's going to be a staff member who's going to write a grant, who's going to hire a contractor, and the HPC may be overseeing that. But at the end of the day, you know, when their committee meetings are over, they're going home, and they're not going to do any work <laughs> until they come back. My guns. Yeah, I mean, I um, guess going back to Stephanie's point, I would personally find it helpful to have that like written in somewhere like we would do this if we get a grant uh, yeah because <laughs> <Sort of>, <laughs> otherwise yeah you i would read this and think like oh is this coming out of the city budget and i think that's so right knowing the funding source yeah or but if knowing, there isn't like, one but that they would need to get one that's fine too but. right and it also i think helps if you're looking at it five years later like oh we didn't do this because we didn't get a grant <laughs> right so maybe it's still a priority we just still right. need funding And I don't know where the best place to put it is, but. Uh, it could be another line that we add in there. Um, again, we're kind of making this, I mean, we've got the priority cost and who. It could be funding source could be in there. Um, and if it just says grant, then people know that it would be something. But even, oh, some yeah. grants are 80-20. It's just trying to keep it a little bit simpler. But. Um, we could certainly look at that. Yeah, I mean, right, you may not be covering the whole cost, but at least it indicates that. Um, so just quickly kind of working through archaeologically sensitive areas. I mean, it's not a critical thing for Montpelier that may be more critical in other places. It would be nice to have at some point. It helps you out if you're looking at Act 250 these other things because if you have an archaeologically sensitive area then you know you can have that mapped and identified I wouldn't probably keep that one in um, so three would go five would go compile oral histories that was just a suggestion I made that one doesn't I don't see anything that says critical here that we would have to I don't see a critical need for that. Right, yeah. It's one that I've, when I worked in Franklin County, it was one that a lot of communities were trying to do because they had a large number of older residents who had lived their entire lives in, in Fairfield, in Sheldon, and um, they wanted to be able to capture the stories of people who had lived through the Depression, literally, and we're now in their 90s and you know what was it like to see Fairfield change from 1930 through 2000 um, I don't see that we have that here as much but because we have pretty good documentation in terms of what historically happened over the last time. yeah the oral histories are usually about talking that's Vermont Folk Life Center and bringing oh, in yeah. folks to go and um, get the stories of you know the only ones that might be interesting here would be of you know getting the Pat Leahy's and some of these other ones that talk about mm. growing up here, growing up here, and you know his stories of delivering newspapers to the French Block, or mm -hmm. you know the fact the French Block was empty and he couldn't deliver newspapers there. And here it is, 75 years later, and there's still nobody living there. <laughs> <laughs> um, develop a plan for collections and preservation of artifacts. Um, they have it as a low priority, and I don't know how much of an issue this this is off the top of my head to know whether it's one that would be. You know, do we have do we have a need that's identified? Because the there are various entities who are already doing this, right? They're yep, and again, this is this is a critical thing for some other communities uh, that I've worked with. Um, you know. Uh, Fairfield again, they had the the national, they had the Chester A. Arthur site, oh. and they had stuff in there, and it got broken into, and stuff got stolen, and you're just kind of like, well, that you know, and other places that had a number of things that they stored, and they just stored them in an attic, and the roof leaked, and they lost all these old documents that weren't properly stored and preserved, and so people started, you know, we really need to go and a couple of places went and took their old vault from their town clerk's office and used it to store historic 
items just because it was protected. But again, is that a need that we have when we've got the History Center on State yeah. Street and the old Spalding School in Barry City? I mean, uh, we've got a couple places that yeah. we could store these types of things. Um, Increasing appreciation. I like to coordinate, collaborate, and sponsor educational events. I think that's perfectly fine. I don't think that's something that would be, um, although they have a couple of them. It actually looks like they, they've got most of these labeled as low priorities. So, and that may be fine. If their priorities are A, then maybe these are less important. They just have the first yeah. speaker series that they're going to use the planning department to help. Yep, which is really to educate the design review. So that makes sense. They're only they're not looking at doing a lot of those. Um, develop a historic topics on the city website. That's a high priority. That's fine. That can stay. Education materials for the public. They have that as a high high value. Continue to expand partnerships with educational institutions. Um, they have that as a low to medium priority. Again, I don't know how much in relation to all the other things that they're doing. I mean, it seems trying like trying to a coordinate good, and collaborate. I mean, I don't. I mean, it seems like a good effort, but um, whether or not they can get to it with everything. Yeah, and again, the, the concern that here would be a little bit of the who, HPC, possible consultants or collaborators, and you're kind of like, again, this comes down to having Planning Commission staff really do these. I mean, so I think if somebody personally wants to in, inject themselves into coordinating with a teacher and te going over to the high school. Well, you could hold, it, hold them to it, that it's the HPC or some consultant that they get and not your office in that case. I very rarely see that the, the, the these commi commissions self show up. So, well, I mean, th there's there are going to be things that may happen, but it seems like there's like two baskets, one thing, like a group of things that we are going to do and commit to and like should hold ourselves accountable to. And then a lot of things that are like, yeah, those seem like okay ideas. It's hard to know between now and like the next seven years if they're gonna happen or not. If they don't, it's probably not gonna be a huge deal. If they do, it might be pretty cool. But um, I don't know if we like frame them differently. Yeah, cause I feel like if we don't put them in at all, then we might forget them and in a few years, if somebody comes on the Historic Preservation Commission who's got a lot of energy and time and wants to do that oral history, if it's not on the list, maybe they won't think of it. We could organize a parking lot of ideas that just goes through, here's here's our implementation strategy and here's a parking lot of, you know, there could be a line on in there that goes, here were additional strategies that were considered. Yeah. 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 Is that kind of what you were saying? Yeah. I think things that we didn't think were bad ideas, but... If we get if we get eight things done, and I mean, it used to be when I I would do these for for smaller municipalities that didn't have a lot of staff and a lot of um, even a lot of committees. They would just have like a planning commission and select. Them. You know, I would eventually get them down to a point of saying, give, give me the five things you're going to do in the next five years, yeah. and and let's focus on those. We may have thirty things in here that we're going to do, but what are the top five things that we're going to work on and you know, a little bit of this, I think, is great. We've got 30 strategies, and at the end of the day, these are the top six or seven that we're going to work on. I like that, and I think it'll help the committees narrow also, because it's not like you can't do those things. You can still, we'll keep that somewhere else, but it's not. We have so many committees and so many things that we want to do, and to be able to narrow it to say, here's five to ten things. Is going to be really helpful. So having that backup list is going to help them do that, I think. Yeah, because like then you focusing. don't feel like you lost right. it. Yeah. Right. And they, they, you might not be like constrained either. Like if something is not on the list, but some new way of get attaining that goal shows up, it won't feel like you can't do that either. Right, because it's like, been recognized as something that could be done. Just. Yeah, we've got a park. We've got a parking lot of stuff that are 
good ideas that there may be things that aren't in the parking lot that may come up that are good ideas yeah Yeah. it was just at a brainstorming event and i love parking lots but somebody was like we should call it a bike rack (laughs) 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 bike racks not parking lots (laughs) 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 i never heard it before should they start like a TikTok account and just put <laughs> it's educational material? I know very little about that and it me makes me feel like an old person because it confuses me and I don't feel good about it. Right, Is it necessary to know? See, oh. that's the critical yeah, that 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 By the time I learn it, by the time I learn it, I'll be like, I got this TikTok thing down. They'll be like, no, that was... Uh, that just, that was it just that looks was like ADD on display. Yeah, that's yeah. all I... Yeah. Well, so anyway... Yeah. <laughs> As we all scribble furiously on our paper. <laughs> Find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, five. We're banning. <laughs> so initiate program to install interpretive informational historic markers. Um, they have that as a low to medium. I, I don't know if that would be. Those are the kind of things. Parking lotted or bike racked. Like, yeah, but that feels like if you get the right like grad student <laughs> and the right HPC person, that could just happen easy with no money. Yeah, I think the idea is, that, and what I would like to see them is just to make sure that they, the idea of goal B is we want to increase the community's appreciation of historic resources. So the barrier that or the issue they found was last time we tried to do design review standards, the community really didn't seem to value our historic it was just kind of taken for granted and they were like we need to be doing more to make sure people actually understand and appreciate the historic what's what's historic around them maybe they see things and don't even realize that's historic and make people understand what's out there and why it's valuable and how difficult it is to replace if it's lost and so i think the what's in goal b is important i think they just need to make sure that they focus on what are the important things to to getting there, you know, it, it seems a little focused on making sure the public and developers understand the design review regulations because number one kind of focuses their high priority was that workshop on that. Education materials seem to be focusing on the, the value of historic resources. So, I mean, there may be a little bit that they can work on, but I think we can bike rack a couple others and see if they um, you know come up with a couple others again it really comes down to making sure they can prioritize and do something to make sure they're getting out there do those walking tours and those um, although it'll be a little bit more difficult now to do that in in conjunction with the farmers market considering the farmers market will be out at Caledonia Spirits it's tough to do a downtown walking tour. Yes, the downtown. <laughs> All summer it's going to be out there? <laughs> Stay? Yeah. I don't know. I, that was what I'd heard. I, I, I'm, oh, actually, I'm what hearing I, second and third. I heard that in the summer it's going to the state lot. Oh, it is, it's going back to downtown? Yeah, yeah off, oh, okay. of the, off of Taylor Street. But the state lot. Oh, okay. Oh, lots. Good. I, room. <laughs> makes sense. Um, what did we end up doing with four, strategy four? Is that is that bike racked or? I had bike racked that one. I think that's going to involve a lot of staff, and I don't mm-hmm. think if I'm going to have staff working on something, it's probably not going to be coordinating yeah. to work with the high school on educating or going yeah. to Norwich. It would be more if there was a high school focused group that yeah. wanted to add this to it. Yeah. Um, and then five also. Then five also. Okay. Yeah, six and seven were, uh, would be kept. They're continuing. And then a create a program to assist with recovery, collection, preservation, and display of historically significant items. Um, I would probably bike rack that one. Which which one is that? I'm sorry. Eight uh, top of page four. One left. We're, we're blazing through these now. Uh, then goal C: continue to improve upon the city's <clears throat> protection of historic resources. These are all the things that we are going to do to actively try to protect our historic resources. Um, policy of protecting, enhancing, and perpetuating use of the city's historical, archaeological, blah, blah, blah. If you remember in the start of the 
design review regulations, they had this big policy statement that took up almost the first page. So I kind of told them, like, that's really kind of more of a policy than it is needed in the regulations. It's still in the regulations, but they want to adopt that separately as a policy. So they didn't take it out of the regs. They didn't take it out of the regs. It may eventually come out of the regs. But because it's important to them and it's not a big big priority, I would say that's that should that could stay or should stay. Adopt the policy on maintaining the city owned historic buildings. I'll be interested to see what city council kind of thinks of that. Um, I would like, I think the only thing missing in there I might ask them to plug in is consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards is there are multiple ways of meeting the interior standards. There's rehabilitation, preservation. Oh, right. It's not specific, is it? Not specific. There are like four different categories yeah, I hope it's between, between, you know, you know, George Washington slept here, and <laughs> and this is an old building that's got some cool architecture to it. I mean, there's like I think four different um, scales. It would be interesting to kind of put in here if we're going to adopt the policy. Well, certainly when we get to the policy stage, there would have to be some designation. But their goal is we should have a policy that says we've got we own a number of our most historic buildings, and we should protect them in accordance with these standards. Um, Are we not doing that now? That's sort of what I was wondering too. <laughs> well, uh, some of these they want to add, they want to add in a policy that just adds that to our, um, kind of in the same way the Energy Committee wants a policy on purchase of equipment that are net zero. Oh, right, okay. Um, it's, it's kind of saying, how are we going to spend our money? And they would like to have it so they could be, we can, I don't know, call the city council to task if they decide to replace these windows without being historically consistent or whatever. Or then then they, they, they have the ability to come and say, hey, we have a policy of maintaining our building to this historic standard. If you want to do it, you know, you can do whatever the heck you want to. A policy is just a policy. You can ignore a policy. It doesn't have teeth. It doesn't have any no. teeth, but it's a policy. But a policy sets a standard that's a standard that that we're all going to talk about this and we're all going to commit to doing this and because everybody it puts attention. it on the puts it in writing and puts it on in a position that says this is how we're going to operate mm -hmm. and then if people start violating then you start wondering why you have that policy but um certainly from that standpoint um establish a program to identify endangered historic buildings again this is one i i would definitely bike rack that one because I don't see that that's really yeah. a role that we would be um, taking on and, and it came up directly with the Jacob Davis property when that came up we said this is you know we are willing to be here to hear if a private developer came in and said we're gonna pick up this property and we need the city's assistance through grant writing a tax stabilization and this other thing then we can restore the building great but it's not our job to identify that building, go out, knock on the doors, and say, "Hey, you know, we don't think you're doing enough to protect your building, and and we're gonna we're gonna suggest to you yeah. how to fix your building, and we're gonna offer you money to fix your building, and then people are gonna sit back and say, well, 'Well, I'm gonna wait till my building goes to crap, so the city will give me money.' It seems like if the committee labels it as low priority and high cost, we probably don't need to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I was, like if you map them out, anything in that quadrant should just yeah. go away. Yeah. Um, continue to administer and enforce the provisions of the zoning regulations um, that protect historic structures, and then there's a list of them down here. Um, and I don't think any of these, I think all of these are, are perfectly fine and this is appropriate. What about um, I? where they're saying possibly require HPC review of demolition of all buildings or sections thereof that are more than 50 years old. I'm, let's say there's a, an older building, not in the district, not in the, you know, not historically evaluated. Does that mean that HPC is going to have to look at it? It does seem like that, doesn't it? It, uh, it, it does, and this one says possibly require HPC review. They, they've, I mean, to a certain extent, they've been looking at that, and my push to them has been we should be looking at 
what it means to, you know, they should be participating in the rewrite of the zoning to make sure that the DRB and DRC have the tools they need. Um, not necessarily the HPC. I tr I tr I'm trying not to get other committees to be providing those inputs because ultimately it's going to come down to the rules anyways. Um, the mainframe at the Department of Labor qualifies here. <laughs> Wait, what, what's so going to come down to the committees anyway? I didn't know. Uh, the, the DRB and DRC. So even if it goes to HPC, they're not going to, HPC oh, doesn't get a vote. Make the decision. Well, yeah, they're yes. going to eventually just go and make a recommendation, which means it really still comes back down to making sure you write the rules that you know whatever we as a community value are we going to allow these historic structures to be demolished demolished under certain conditions or not demolished at all you know we've got to come up with what the rules are um, and how they're going to be evaluated and HPC needs to participate in the writing of those zoning rules to make sure that they're so they're looking to amend the zoning rules yes um, although I think you're correct in that to possibly require HPC review of demolition of all buildings is a pretty extensive. It's a pretty extensive, and I don't know. I would. There's a lot of or sections lot, thereof. A which, lot of leaps we have to make to get there. Now. Yeah, yep. we already have this in the district, right? Parts of this are in the district, but it doesn't go to HPC for review. It just goes to DRC for review. Uh -huh. Now, a member of the HPC can certainly go to the DRC here and provide comment, but in order for it to go to that, HPC meets once a month, so that would take what's currently a two-week process and turning into a six-week process because we'd have to send it to HPC for comment before we could warn it for the DRC. So, I mean, this, this, strikes, this section strikes me as odd because it's sort of saying the HPC isn't totally satisfied with what the design review is now, but that, I mean, this is the city plan, and <laughs> so I, I don't know, I just, I've, I'm struggling with this goal. I mean, I understand that the HPC may have a goal to make the design review more, whatever word you might use, stringent is what comes to my mind, but it could be a different word, but is that going to be in our city plan? I don't know, it seems odd to me. So, well, the first one's talking just about demolition, and I think it's okay if we maybe struck after the possibly. Possibly, yes. We could strike that, and then that one's probably okay. Number two is amend the design review boundaries. We just talked about that. That's actually just there because we haven't gotten that adopted yet. So does that, that but, doesn't need to be there anymore? But we didn't there? necessarily always follow neighborhood boundaries. It says those are other justification. Okay. Which so I think we had with the gateway. Our justification. Yeah. 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 All right. And we, we haven't actually, it hasn't gone through city council to get to get that quote done. I mean, I think by the time we get this adopted, that will probably be done. But I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> One would hope. Um, continue to process to amend the city's design review regulations. Those are in, in the works. Um, with their development of guidelines. With, with their development of guidelines. Um, follow up on the archaeological resources study. If conducted, that probably gets um, bike racked. Bike racked. Because we bike racked the plan. You have to do the plan before you can actually put it in here. So that would get bike rack review, adaptive reuse standards. That's probably one we could leave in here. I mean, it's more of a possibly a bike rack thing, but it's just review those rules to make sure that they're consistent. They could probably find some time in the eight years to do that. Explore and amend design review committee procedures to require at least one member to have historic preservation training or education. I think that's a good one. That's actually. Does that belong under the Unified there. Development Regulations, though? Yeah, it's part of the DRC. Okay. I would I would leave that one there. Um, the next strategy: investigate what programs could be instituted to assist projects. Uh, single and two-family homes, owner-occupied, that rehabilitate the structures consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards. Um, that's one that they they want to come up with. I know they were interested in that one. Is to, to 
develop a program that would do something like that. So li a list of programs that could be used? Yeah, so what we have is currently anyone who's a commercial property has access to a number of state and federal grants. Right. But if you're a single family home, you have to meet the design review standards, but you don't have access to any funding to help you pay for it. Mm -hmm. And so what they wanted to be able to do is to identify funding opportunities for these single two family owner occupied structures so they could access funding. I don't know what that would be, um, but for them it was to do a study. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm comfortable leaving that one because I know they were, they sounded like they really wanted to do that in the next eight years, so. Okay. Can we go back to strategy four? Yep. I, sorry. I, um, so I see that, yeah, some of the other ones are more uh, process, um, but I, I don't. I mean, I amend the demolition of histor historic structures provisions to make the process clear and to cover all historic structures. I don't, is that something we agree with as a city? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't have a problem with that. I guess the and to cover all historic structures. Are we talking about national, like in the registered, national registered historic structures? There's gonna be some um, question as to defining what that means, all historic structures. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm reading it as saying any structure over 50 years old. But and, and we've heard some argument that, in fact, our zoning already covers all historic structures, but the truth is it hasn't really been enforced that way. So we're kind of a little bit of what we need to look at the demolition provisions. Well, I mean, I I just have I had to a, figure that out. I have an issue with that and to cover. I mean, I'm fine with amend the demolition of historic structures provision to make the process clear, but anything else in that section to me Do doesn't really. You want to really put to oh. between two and cover. You could put to study the or to study, study whether to. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I, I guess. I, Sorry, what was the last one? What are you suggesting? Uh, so it would be amend the demolition of historic structures provision to make the process clearer and to study the study or study yeah study whether to cover all historic structures. Then it doesn't commit us to doing that, but it's something that they it want to do. It may be something, so. I know they want to expand it to include that, but okay, I'm okay as, as somebody who enforces rules, it's always difficult to kind of go through and say, okay, where do we, what's, where does that line get? Right, is this garage a historic yeah, is structure? Yeah, is that garage or that shed <clears throat> off the back or whatever on a building that's not the historic district? Um, So we're at six? Uh, yes, so six. Um, consultation with HPC, the Planning Commission will participate in Act 250 and Act 248 where historic resources may be impacted. That's not really our rule, is it? I don't think to putting that in there doesn't we've, yeah, we've, talked, we've talked about this one before. I don't know if I had. I don't think anybody had. Oh, yeah. We talked about this. Yeah. And what did we come up with? I'm firmly opposed to it. Yeah, get it. Oh, yeah. I was thinking, I was like, I don't remember, I don't, I don't remember, and I didn't catch that in my proofread of what they sent back to me. I don't remember uh, committing us to will participate. Yeah, right. No. I think I had something that was the, the may, may participate in Act 250. Do we want to, do we want to soften it just to say may, or do we I mean, want to? I, there's mechanisms in two. I mean, planning commissions already has a right to intervene in a 248 process. I'm not clear on what our rights are in Act 250. Yeah, we, we have the same. But there are same. mechanisms to get in if, if we want to. I, mean, I don't think we have to codify that in the HPC 
No, because if we do it here, then it's like every committee. Yeah, I don't think that's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't think it has to be plugged into <laughs> these specific chapters. And I think there's a larger question that we're gonna have to grapple with down the road as to whether or not we want to engage. You know, the termination through the, the through the, the Act the, 250 process. Well, it's, just I, just whether or not we want to sort of stake a position on it in the town plan. Um, well, we're so uh, arguing the other side. I can ag I would agree on Act 250 on a lot of cases because really we do our own and we do a good job on our own rules mm -hmm. and we do our own our, our own reviews. So yep. for us to uh, oppose an Act 250 permit kind of seems a little weird. Right. Um, Section 248 is different. So that's usually something that has been exempted and preempted and taken out of our control. And so. If somebody wants to stick a um, uh, cell tower <clears throat> dish on the side of a church yeah. steeple or something, and we would not have any opportunity to comment on that because it's part of the telecommunications and it's protected. And the, we the recent changes to 248 allow us to do that now. Those changes of the legislature two years ago. And they were largely predicated on increased public participation. And now towns and planning commissions want to say have statutory right to intervene if they want to. So we don't even but, have but, a plan but, that but, has but, a certain But I think, I think irrespective of what the answer to the, mm -hmm. whether or not we have those mechanisms within the 248 and Act 250 context, I don't think we need to be, we don't need to be <laughs> making a position here. And I, that's, I, I think there's just better places to grapple with that issue, and it's going to be a big one that I think we're going to have to discuss with a certain amount of vigor, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Before, I mean, that's just my guess. Just, I just, I don't, I don't think it belongs here, and I, so whether it, it it's creates, whether it it's uh, if it's here. yeah so whether it's <clears throat> whether it's historic preservation or whether it's water quality or whether it's whatever it's right act these act 250 act 248s <clears throat> but are that are that what they really saying is like trying to set out an intention for themselves to be aware of what's going on with those processes because I, I think what their goal was with that and I, and I had given them some information that said, you know, these are ways other communities work on protecting historic resources. Um, in their case, they don't, as a Historic Preservation Commission, have any standing. Okay. We have the standing. Mm -hmm. So I think what they're reading into this, what they're doing is saying that in, in these Act 250 permits, we have to consult with them, the HPC, and then we have to participate where archaeological and historic resources are impacted. Isn't so some of their day jobs reviewing historic <laughs> preservation yeah. permits that go before <laughs> Act 250? For some of They'll them, be aware. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that's that that's you know yeah I, I just think that I just think that there's a larger concern where we agree to a section that says the consultation part I don't have a problem with it's the we will participate when there are certain criteria that are raised in a in either an Act 250 or 248 proceeding yeah and I mean certainly my years here and my years at Barry City we've never done very much with Act 250 applications that come in, or or Act 248s, right. um, except to, in some cases, actually just write a letter of support that says we support these proposal. Yeah. And in your experience, is that is that approach served you well? It's it's been <laughs> fine for for the, the exactly. situation we've had. We haven't exactly. had anyone who's I mean, kind of come in to. Yeah, no, and I, I think that's it's that's the right. one that comes in. But I don't think I don't think. Going to your point, not having it in here would prevent us from going and having a case by case where a case comes up exactly. and somebody decides to right. stick a giant satellite dish on the side of a yeah, I mean, yeah, church steeple. Then we would probably be able to still, we, this, because we didn't have it in here, isn't going to say, well, you didn't have it in your plan. It said you can do that. Exactly. Those, still, yeah, those things have to be in accordance. They have to turn in plans for and I just, to fit. And I just don't want to get in a situation where 
somebody says, oh, well, there was an archaeological concern with respect to a Act 250 permit, and you guys didn't consult with us. And, you know, the city town plan says that you need to participate, you need to consult with us. Yeah, a little bit of my concern would be if we knew there's an archaeological state, I, I think if the state SHPO and folks have signed off on it. Right. <laughs> there's only so much you can do. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is not a lot. In most oh. cases. So six, so we would actually remove that. Strike. So that would be just a strike. Yes. Okay. Yes. We got this. Enough yeses. S uh, seven is another interesting, unique one that they've been pushing for. Um, Again, aren't many of the people already involved in this section? <laughs> Adoptive a policy that says the Historic yeah. Preservation Commission will be notified of any Section 106 report requests and the need for the city to produce Section 106 reports involved in historic resources in Montpelier and such notice will be provided as soon as practical after the start of the Section 106 review. I receive very little of these. The, the irony of the whole thing is, is I've been telling them I've never received a section 106 report and then of course like a week after i say that we actually get one in the mail <laughs> so um well i now can say i've gotten one in 11 years mm -hmm. other than ones that we've done ourselves as part of the city um but again um my concern they put this as you can see they had this as a high priority something they feel very strongly about um my concern was most of these Section 106 reports are generally done by the city for stuff that we have to do because Section 106 reports get popped up because you're doing something in conjunction with a federal grant. So if you're getting federal monies, um, and occasionally private groups, organizations get access to these um, Section 1, you know, federal dollars, so they need a Section 106 report. Um, you know, a downstreet or somebody will get a Brownfields grant. The Brownfields grants federal money and therefore they got to do a Section 106 report. A lot of them are city projects and my warning to HPC was the minute you come in and start, you know, delaying and slowing down and throwing wrenches into, monk, in, into gears on a, on a Section 106 report is the day you're going to get a lot of people not very happy with you. So if you want this tool, you better be extremely careful about where you use it because if you're going to decide to jump on the Section 106 report because of the potential of an archaeological site in the transit center parking lot, and you're going to hold up that project for, <laughs> or whatever it happens to be. I don't it's, even understand quite how it would be, like how the city could force the Section 106 project process to listen to them, because that's a federal requirement. And so, you're entitled to provide comment. So the city, so a, a private, a private group. Uh, Downstreet is going to do a project, and for whatever reason, it's not getting reviewed through other things, but it's going to destroy some um, historic resource, and they needed to do a Section 106 report. We could provide comment. Once the Section 106 report goes, it's supposed to be sent to the municipality for comments, and then all those get sent back to the SHPO and off to the feds. We could write a letter opposing a project because they're not protecting this project will destroy the historic character of, you know, of the project. So any, I mean, any of the federal funding that comes through my office, we're required to consult with SHPO. So I'm not sure what, are they looking to have more, like they might disagree with what the SHPO has decided? I mean, isn't SHPO involved in all federal funding? Yeah, they want the local HPC to be able to provide their input to the SHPO for consideration in the determination of that. One more voice. Just yeah. One more voice. So in, and is, tell me if I'm reading this wrong, but this just seems to me like a mechanism for them to get notice so they can file whatever comments they want to with in a timely fashion, right? So I guess if that's correct, do we care? I mean, does, is that really an onerous 
Oh, because they're just being notified? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's... Go ahead. I think this, this is, you know, I mean, maybe not overly onerous, but any developer who's doing some kind of process that needs a Section 106 review, this adds an extra layer um, and an extra impediment. And I, I, I'm also not sure, like, if the city is who's allowed to comment, is the HPC necessarily always representing the interests of the whole city? Well, I guess that's a, a, well, again, and, well, you bring up a good question. So is this, is this a request that the commission be notified by whom? I guess I read it like if Mike got it in his mailbox or every yeah. And, and if that was, and even, so even if this, so if, the, if that was all it is to, they wanted notice of these things and that was all they, all HPC was gonna do with it, my question was like, yeah, I mean, we don't need to put this in the plan for me to go and give you guys copies of, you know, when I get an Act 250 or Section 248, you know, it just gets dropped in the filing cabinet. If somebody wants to get copies of those when they come in, awesome, I'll, I'll give you a copy of it. It's not a big deal. I don't need a big thing in the plan. But it really seemed like they wanted to take an active role in that, in the Section 106 review process. So their reason for wanting it is not just, it does say here they just want to be notified. They, they would like to go and take have that so they can make make those other steps. And again, if if they were, are reviewing these things in 99 out of 100 times, they're just like, yep, that's perfectly fine. I'm okay with that. But I, and again, my, my, you know, I don't have a vote either way. My recommendation to them was to be extremely, if, if you wanted this, and we're gonna give you the Section 106 reports anyways, because all you're doing is asking for them, and I never get them anyways, but, the issue is going to come up. The ones I will guaranteed get are the ones that the city is working on a project, fixing a bridge because we got AOT funds, um, uh, doing a project. And if if I give them Section 106 reports and if they want them, I'll give them to them. And they just start using them to start to throw wrenches into city projects. Mm -hmm. They're going to very quickly find themselves not being a very popular group. So, I mean, I mean, do you do you know? I I don't know anything about the six. Who gets to comment? I do well, I only know, you know, that we get the letters. I didn't I didn't even know that the city got to comment in the one hundred six okay. product pro, process. And actually, I didn't. Somehow, in our discussion, I I see that they're just wanting to be notified. Yeah. I guess which does the does the process just call for general public comments or is it, are there certain parties that are entitled to comment? I didn't think that the Section 106, but you know They more. seem to think because we are a CLG community that the HPC has some opportunity okay. to comment well, only because we're a CLG community. Okay. Uh, hmm. But I'm kind of relying a little bit on their, that this is not a section of planning that I know a ton about. I don't think this needs to be in the plan. Like, if this happens, okay. But, like, if it doesn't, I don't think this is, goes a long way in achieving anything, right? Like, if seven years from now we look back and we're like, oh, no, they never were notified of, <laughs> like, <laughs> Section 106 yeah. permits. Like, it, was there a, a particular project that this came out of? I don't know if they have a specific thing that they are... <laughs> have a concern with um, I mean it's so specific that it makes me wonder if sometimes somebody did not get notified but yeah and I think in a lot of cases they don't um, and I think it's just a little bit of they maybe somebody happened to read their CLG background information and said hey we're supposed to be getting notified we're, we're allowed to get notified and we're supposed to be getting notified we can get notified you know we could be commenting on all of these projects that involve section 106 reports and of course I don't it's just a question of if we get them so um, but yeah I kind of said my my concerns on that um, they did list it as a high priority they list they yeah. absolutely yeah. this is and I just kept pushing back on them to go and say you know I'm not sure I get this, but they didn't know. prioritize the one above. I wonder if it's if they feel the same way. Oh, Number yeah, six, yeah, yeah, because they they seem sort of similar to me. If like yeah, one 
both are things that we can participate in and don't necessarily need to call it. Yeah, and I think in this case, they, they're, those two, they rely on us. So they're in six trying to yeah, right. okay, hook, true. hook us in. Right. And in seven, it's um, they, I think, have the power as a, as a CLG community to provide their own input to the way up they just need to be notified so shouldn't they be getting notice then yeah <laughs> but they haven't been they, they they haven't been and you know so that's like i said but it's seven maybe one that's more of a doesn't have to be i think we could just do it right yeah, yeah we can just do it and give them give them the copies um i think they wanted to formalize it with a policy or something but i don't know if it necessarily needs that it's just an action we can do it and See what see what happens when they get them. Um, eight continues to assist historic property owners with grant writing, which we already do. Um, nine, they support the land use plan, which we haven't written yet, but at some point we'll highlight the historic <laughs> context and <laughs> character is appropriate. So when we get there, this will. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, revise the city's agreement with the capital complex to administer design review rules in order to clarify the roles and responsibilities of each party. That's interesting that that's a low priority. Yeah, yeah I, I would have thought thing. that would have been a higher priority, yeah. too. Um, but it's, it's one we have tried periodically from year to year to year. We've tried. Right. Uh, Gwen tried once. Uh, my office tried when I've been there once, and it hasn't been very successful. So we'll see. We'll, we keep waiting as administrations change. We go back, see if we can get an agreement. So there are no design review rules right now? In the capital complex, the yeah. they, capital complex regulates their own. Their own, right. But what we've been trying to get is an agreement that goes through and says that we will, we basically do this anyways. We don't do design review. The way our attorneys and we believe is the exemption for the capital complex is only for design review. So the capital complex committee will review for design, but we review for everything else. The capital complex committee thinks they are sovereign, territory. sovereign and nothing, no zoning can apply in the capital complex, which that's not what state law says, but that's what they have an attorney general opinion from 1971 that says they're God and we can't do anything to them. One um, more year and that opinion can go in the historic register. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. That's right. And it's uh, so it's, it. it's interesting and it's wrong because it was based on it. The opinion was based on old law that doesn't exist anymore, but it doesn't change the fact that they keep throwing this thing back out. Um, Somebody wrote something on a piece of paper. And they don't have any. And they don't have. They don't have any application forms. They don't have any way of filing. They don't have any way of uh, searching the land records because there are no land records. They um, don't have any standards with respect to anything. There are no parking standards. No stormwater standards. There's no building height setbacks. No. The only thing they have are design standards. So we're like, if the only rules you've adopted are design standards. And state law only really says you guys regulate design standards, then you guys do design standards and we'll regulate all the rest. So Mike, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really frustrating to sit in that meeting. Are you with on different this? <laughs> capital <laughs> No, I'm not on the capital complex committee. But I've sat with, you know, two different PGS people and, and each one of them keeps coming back and saying, No, 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 and I'm like, whatever, you know, this is you know, you guys don't have any rules. But so in, in any event, we still enforce the zoning on everything else, even though officially we don't have their blessing to do so. Um, so we would still like to reach a point where we can get that agreement written. We've got a draft written up. They just don't want to play ball. So fine. <laughs> Stop me from issuing a zoning permit. <laughs> um, and actually, the, the developers and, and real estate people actually appreciate it because they have something in the land records that says that this construction was okay. And there are only eight privately owned buildings there in the capital complex. And that's really all we care about. Because we told them we will fully exempt everything that's state owned. We will do no zoning requirements for the state owned buildings. Oh, so they are exempt. We, well, we, that was part of the agreement was we will fully exempt any state owned properties. Okay. And of the six privately owned properties, we will regulate everything that's not design review. 
They said no. Oh. Why are there why? Because buildings? they said they they regulate everything. Oh, They've got right. an attorney opinion that Somebody says yeah, we can't do anything. So I see. They're kind of in the middle of it. Oh, okay. They're stuck like in the middle. Like on Baldwin Street. And, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. VNRC building. Yeah, VNRC. Yeah. We've, we've issued permits yeah. for them. The new one? Mm -hmm. We issued permits except for design review. Just, just, just to spite property? the state. I think so. So yeah, 11 and 12 are the same. So those are just... So if we put the parking lot in a budget in one category and we put all these, yeah, let's keep doing that, yay, in another category, there aren't really that many things left. It really is just a, now a top five Yeah, or six. it's going to be a strategy. So these are the things we want to do that are new and different. Um, these are the things that we're going to continue to do. And these are the things that we're going to parking lot, bike rack as options for... Future, future, future things, or if if there happens to be an opportunity that comes along, then so two things. One, what is what are your next steps going to be with this? And second, is there anything that you need from us right now that's helpful to you to help do the next thing? If this gets your blessing, if you guys say, "Hey, this is good with what the decisions we made tonight," um, I drop this in the basket with housing, which we already finished. Um, I'll make these changes here um, or make some notes of it because what will eventually happen is the decision we just made here to put them into three categories sort by new, continue, and bike rack. Listed. And by priority. Yeah. And so if we do it here, we'll do it for all the other ones. So, but at this point, that's a good suggestions it's going to make it work better and like i said eventually when we get to the end we'll have aspiration goals and then the strategies organized in some way all together that we can reference i think that will work better than saying the same thing three times so hpc is not going to see these again i mean our modifications no, no that was no because they've They've changed we, it once. Yeah, they've changed it twice. Oh, twice. Okay. <laughs> so we've we've made changes and kind of said, "What do you guys think about this?" And so I think at this point we we make these changes, um, and then when we work to the public hearing process, when we start to compile things and build towards our our process, we can they they can come back in and sit out there and. And I think once we have once we have them all lined up. We're going to look at them again and make yeah. more changes once we see them all together. Yeah. So yeah. we're just saying, okay, shelved right for now. now. Yeah. So, so, for first right, pass. so for right now, I feel like it might be a good idea if we had something official to sort of we can get behind with respect to what we just did for the last hour. There motion to approve has changed. Mike has a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Question <There's>, mark. <laughs> I don't want to give anyone like a false impression that it's that's done. That's yeah. Like, I don't that think. I don't think. Happen well, or, I don't. Or, or, or like something might not change. You know. Well, like do we could make a motion. Maybe that's like the motion. motion. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, I'm just just, just to sort of. Uh, you know, motion to put it in the basket. <laughs> to just you know agree to the changes that we discussed. Pending further changes. Well, I mean, you know, it, I think it's better than just not having anything on the record that we, you know, reviewed these things and agreed to it. But. Yeah. Why not? Why? No, I think <laughs> that makes sense. What was it for? Would the, we just have the minutes reflect? Then it shouldn't reflect anything because there was no, we didn't we didn't act on anything. We just went through a document, right? And discussed it. So we won't. But next time we won't look at. We're done looking at this right now. So we yeah. might as well say. Do we want to have a motion to <coughs> categorize the way that we discussed, and then move on to other so you, chapters? <laughs> Review this one later. We don't have to do a motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to try to think of something. That just a motion that said we we completed the initial review yeah, of that's this. Right. And that's that's a motion to consider initial review complete. Initial oh. review and and categorize. Yeah. 
cat moving. Second. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the initial review complete is fine. I don't think we need to add the other things because we've got. I will. I will do those other things. Regardless. Aye. Any dis- Five. Aye. All right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> just, we don't even need to. Any, any nids? No. All right. Uh, so we have a little more than ten minutes left. I don't think we're going to get to the economic development chapter. I'll, I'll just give a quick two cents of, of what this is. So there's a little bit up top. It's the city council calls it community prosperity. Can we so please hand that over? That's not, that's not so, so, right. so the city council calls it a little bit of community oh, prosperity. I was actually working on this through with Laura when she was here, and they've since hired and lost another executive director. So did you even get a chance to work with her? No, I met with her twice. Um, unfortunately, she seemed like she was going to be a wonderful and great asset, and I'm sorry to see that it didn't work out. But. Um, so this is not necessarily complete. You'll see a couple of places where it has little questions like, you know, do we benchmarks or uh, a couple of things? But we kind of worked through it, and we have like a plan that was just adopted too, right? Like, and then this two years ago that touches on a lot of those things from the uh, um, EDSP, Economic Development Strategic Plan. A lot of these things kind of come from that. Laura took a lot of. Um, looks at things she had a plan she was working on she had a work plan she was working on um, or in working from which we kind of took some of those pieces so this kind of just drops a few of those pieces in um, it's laid out as one big aspiration all those things with the dots you know are is there a single aspiration um, and then the goals are obviously targeting the educated workforce, the flexible, efficient building stock, the building economic climate, quality place, high quality for the place to live. So I put that out there because it may not necessarily be, be as fully developed as the ones that you saw or having priorities because there hasn't been anyone to have a priority list with, but it was kind of, we could start thinking and chewing on these things here of um, kind of getting a sense of where they were thinking. And it's a challenging one to do because it's, been, it's always been a difficult topic. You know, how what what is economic development? What is community prosperity? How are we going to evaluate that? Um, it's not as easy as, as you think. Um, you know, you can have an economic development plan that grows to grand list grows jobs, grows your GDP, for lack of a better term. You know, we're not going to really create jobs. We're just going to have the existing businesses be more vibrant and make more money. What's your metric? You know, How are we going to measure success? How do we know if we've been successful in our economic development? Is it, you know, we're not going to measure our GDP. <laughs> you know, we're not going to measure our GDP, but you, you can have that, you know, just that, that, that sense. You know, But is it creating more jobs? Is it? Well, they, they have a benchmark under... C. Yes, and that one was based on the um, meals receipts and, and rooms and meals tax. Yep. So they, this was based on their, it is based on, on partly with um, the EDSP and partly with Flora's plan. And their target was they were, were and are receiving $100,000 a year for five years. That's what the EDSP laid out is that we were going to fund them and in exchange they were going to go and basically be growing our grand list and growing our income such that five years from the starting date they would be generating a hundred thousand dollars a year in new revenue so it would justify continuing to spend a hundred thousand dollars a year on them because they're paying for themselves so that's why these come in here hey we need 20 new establishments um, I was looking at jobs. They were looking at est- establishments, so okay. Um, but they wanted to increase meals and increase the rooms and meals by 42%. And a lot of that was predicated on getting the hotel in. 
Oh, they nice. felt they got the hotel in. They would, they could help to coordinate that and um, and be in a position to be able to take advantage of those additional revenues. So that's giving a little bit of what their thinking is. Whether that's a good benchmark or the best benchmark for the city, that was the best benchmark for MDC. Because if they wanted to continue to have funding, they're going to have to continue to meet their EDSP target of generating $100,000 a year. So we may look at that through a different set of glasses. That So they didn't choose to look through at, in terms of tax receipts, which is the point, right? Uh, well, meals and rooms. No, and I, I guess I was thinking property. Uh, no, not by property tax, though. So. Not by nope. property. Isn't, isn't that what they're supposed to be doing? Isn't it's that more the measure difficult, they get? It's more difficult to do um, that because it doesn't change very often. Um, you're only going to capture those for new construction. So, right. yeah, we can catch a Caledonia Spirits, yeah, but yeah. making our downtown more vibrant and better economically won't actually change anything in the grand list because those buildings aren't being bought and sold. In a reappraisal, everybody kind of goes up, so it, it would be a more difficult metric for them to use, I think is why they they avoided that one. Not to say that it would be bad to keep a track on that over time. Ignite the fire loan program. Yes. So we have EDS, we have economic development funds, revolving loan funds. And they were going to call it the Ignite the Fire Loan. It's, it's really about trying to do gap financing to help local businesses. Um, not, it, it, it really isn't just, it, it was gap funding. So gap funding is really looking at um, a conventional lender may be willing to loan $100,000 for a project that's going to cost $130,000. So there's still a gap. Well, if the bank is willing to put up that much, we can be willing to put up a loan for $30,000 to fill that gap. And working with different lenders, the lenders can be, um, the way they can structure it is to, that we get paid back first. And so it was an interesting program that the banks would be willing to have like an interest only loan. There were a couple of lenders in town that were willing to sign on to this program to go through and say, well, if you do under this program a loan through this bank, um, then they'll do a five year deferred loan or interest only loan for that five years. And in those five years, the borrower is paying back the city first. Then after that, they would owe the rest of that. So they, you know, in that scenario, the person who borrowed the money only has to pay back a, a $30,000 loan. Starting off. Starting off. And then the $100,000, the bigger $100,000 loan later. Uh -huh. So it, and, and again, from my standpoint, I was like, I have no idea. If, if, if lenders think this is a good thing yeah. and businesses think it's a good thing and we have the available cash in the bank account because we've got revolving loan funds from the 1980s um, that is just cash that's sitting there. How can how can we take this cash, which was our question to them, we've got $100,000 cash, how do we get this cash moving to help you businesses do things? And they said, well, this this type of gap financing would be really helpful. And we're like, all right, well, that's, that's an idea. Sounds like an EDM festival. Ignite the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> so, um, they so yeah. Spend it on that. Well, I think I do. Giant festival. EDM There's just sounded too much like economic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, what's the what's the economic? Ignite like, yeah. the fire in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like we might be at the end of our room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So, so that's you can you can work on that one. Um, unrelated, whatever's we've got. Um, I'm working with the parks, transportation. Transportation has is working on a draft, trying to get theirs to the committee. They have got their 
aspirations and goals done. Now they're working on strategies. Have you been working with them? Parks, transportation, energy. Yeah. You guys should have yours. Did you guys, did they hand yours out? No? Nope. Nope. Oh. Um, I think there was some aspect that was not quite finished. Oh, okay. Um, Conservation Commission. So what I have, Parks, Conservation Commission, Energy. So I think I've got four or five of them that are going right now. So um, unfortunately, like three of them meet the same night. Oh. And the same night as RPC. So that was kind of like, seriously? Um, but the RPC got pushed to April, so that's good. Yeah, Parks, Transportation, Conservation Commission, Energy, Economic Development, and working with Kurt on utilities. So those are the ones I've got going right now. Um, so. So you think? What do you think will be next? I'm. It's really up to the committees. I push hard to try to get them to make decisions and to move them out. But unfortunately, a lot of these committees meet like energy meet once a month. And so to try to get, yeah. to try to go and say, you know, I really want you guys to try to go and review these things and, and get them out and get them done. It, it's somewhat challenging, but hopefully, hopefully we can get people not to be the historic resources, you know, where it's nitpicking every word for five months you know we really just want to, if, if we can get something that's good and get it get it moving there's always opportunities to revise it as we move this along but so are we going to are you going to interject to them that they should do priorities they should do relative costs as well yep okay. the priorities is really the most important the relative yep. costs i can figure out because the costs are just you know is it something that's less than a thousand dollars something between a thousand and a hundred thousand or something more than a hundred thousand dollars most of those i can estimate Oh, it's a grant to study something that's a medium because it's going to be anywhere from ten to thirty thousand dollars. That's going to be relatively small. Policies and a bunch of other things are relatively low. Yeah. And then building just, an energy farm—that's uh, a high priority. Okay. That's a high cost. That's a, it. Just helps us to evaluate potentially if we have an idea of what it is. Yeah. Okay. Anybody? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second.